Hello there. Well, I haven't done any review videos in a very long time, and I thought just because, too, I don't review something unless I've owned it a while and used it. So I usually don't come up with reviews all that often, but I've had some time on my hands, like we all do. So I thought I'd do a little review of these two lanterns, um, the UCO. And these are candle lanterns, and they've been around a really long time, but they're just really simple. Um, you don't have to worry about batteries or anything like that when you're out using them. Of course, you do have to have enough candles for how long you're going to be burning them for, but you have a lot of options available with them. So I just want to go through and good, say good things and bad things, but um, mostly good in this case. So there are two types of lanterns. There's this one here it, that is called uh, the candelier, and it uses three different three candles within a unified system. And pro and con, um, the housing is really exceptional. Um, it's just very well built, and it's such a simple system, but it works so well. So all you do is these two little these containers here. I'll take one apart, and there it goes. Has a spring, a candle, and a housing. Now, that little piece that went springing away is the base. Here we go. So this goes underneath here, and there's two sides. There's a flat side with a little rounded lip. The rounded lip goes down, so the spring fits inside this and then presses up or down. So as the candle melts and burns, as you can see, here is a candle stub. It presses it up through the tube. Now because this is aluminum, it absorbs some of the heat, so it makes this warm. So as the candle melts, it kind of seals within this tube and burns very, very evenly. Um, the nice thing about that is you don't have to worry about um, the flame stuttering or candle wax dripping down. And I know I've seen some reviews with really bad kind of wax melting explosions in these. And the only thing I can kind of attribute to that is when you would lit them or the position you were in, it was on an uneven level, and that would definitely cause... Um, some leakage the way it's not supposed to. So there's a solution for that, and that is you hang it from something. I mean, if you have a real level surface, it shouldn't be a problem, but the easiest way to take care of keeping this level is hang the thing. So that's what I do. Now, um, I just purchased a brand new tent that I was trying out for the first time last night just in the backyard, and so I thought this would be a good test for for the candle lantern. So what this is, this little nub that's left, this is one of the UCO nine hour candles. So this is just a typical, they have their their, their own kind of number for it, but um, it's just a white candle. It's nothing special, but it burns for nine hours. Now this, these candle stubs that are left, that's all that's left from these candles and they start off all UCO candles are the same height. So that way, as you can see, there's two different there. They're uniform. Um, but these are actually the UCO brand of candles. Um, same thing. I've heard some reviews where people have had really bad luck with candles. Um, the one thing I've noticed is if you actually buy their candles, there's not a problem. I haven't had any problems with them leaking, or there were some people saying, hey, my candle burned in like two hours, and it's supposed to be a nine-hour candle. Well, my first question is, was it their brand of candle? Um, and I know there are a lot of fakes out there, but generally these candles aren't cheap. Um, they're not bad. If you buy them in bulk like this in a 20-pack, they are a lot less expensive than if you buy, you know, the little three-packs. Um, but, of course, sometimes that's this is not something you want to, you know, bring with you camping. But you just toss a bunch of these. Um, now, when I was using them last night, it was in the 40s last night in the tent, so it was nice and cold. Um, but from this candle to this, I lit these at um, about 9.30 at night, and they burned until 6.30 this morning. So that's a real decent burn time. And you probably could have gotten another, I would say maybe another half an hour to 40 minutes out of what's left of that nub, but at that point I just blew it out. Um, so, anyway, and that's the nine-hour candle. Now they do make another kind, which is this one here, 
and this is the beeswax candles. Now they say that these will burn for 12 hours. I have not tried these yet, so I do not know if that's the case. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the box, there we go, 12 hour burn time is what they equal to. So a box of candles that are beeswax, this one box should give you 30, about 36 hours worth of burn time. And same thing, this is gonna vary depend on the outside temperature. If you're burning these in the summer, summer when it's real hot out, I've had some people tell me that these do not last as long because beeswax, of course, melts at a lower temperature than these do. At least that's my understanding. And same thing, I'm not saying I'm, I couldn't be wrong, but that's what generally I've been told and what I've heard. So I'm going to try these out probably this evening to see how it burns. Um, but anyway, so that's the UCO candle system. And what I wanted to show you here, I'm going to load up the beeswax candle. So this is how you do it. You just drop it in there. Obviously, it loads real easy. Put that in on top of the spring. And it has like a little what they call a bayonet mount, which they call for cameras way back in the day. So you just rotate it until it kind of clicks in. And there you go. To get the candles out when they're done burning, same thing. You just rotate this tube out. And it should be up there. And it, because of the way this housing is and it melts it as it is pressed up, they stick in there pretty good. So you usually have to shove them pretty good out of there. And see, it does kind of get stuck. So it's best to have a little something on hand where you can pop it on out of there. And then you just peel the bottom off. Drop in a new candle. As you can see, very, very simple and easy to swap out different candles or uh, different, whoops. See, didn't get the wick out. There we go. So, anyway, that's about it on those, um, on this one. Put it back together. Put the housing together. Turn it till it clicks, and you're done with that one. Okay? Now, the other one I've got is the small one. I, this is the little one candle job. And I do like this one a lot. The little glass housing just slides down. You'd light it with your lighter, whatever, and then raise this up to keep that from blowing in the wind. The nice, the thing I like best about this one, opposed to this one, as you'll notice, there's a little window in it, cut in the housing, that shows you how much candle you have left. As it presses up, of course, obviously the bottom's going to be empty as it travels up. But that is a great way to kind of determine how much burn time you have left. And... Just a really simple system. Again, too, you know, if you have this on an uneven surface, well, you, yeah, you're going to have wax, some wax, probably not a lot, drip over this edge and down the side. Um, but same thing. I've never had that problem because if I don't have a level surface, I do not put them down. I hang them, and then they're always going to be level. Um, generally, if there's a breeze, of course, you're going to have a little something, but not too bad. Um, a couple other things with using these. Um, obviously, with LED lights being you know, so prevalent nowadays and easy to get and use and even charge if you have a solar panel system, why would you want a candle lantern? Well, honestly, it has to do with just what kind of light do you like? Um, because I come from a photography background, I really enjoy the quality of some type of lights. And though solar and LED lights are wonderfully bright and great to cook by and great to work by or read by, you know, they're harsh. And they're very, generally most of them designed for camping, um, like the BioLite, which I have all their, all their um, camping and solar lights, and I love them. But I don't love the quality of light that comes out of them. They're just very kind of bluish and harsh. So... I do like a more pleasant light, and there's nothing but like a little candle light near a campfire, because if you've got your campfire going, you have little candles on the table. It just creates a really nice mood, and it just makes you feel good. But that's really it. Um, that's the only reason I prefer candles for than an LED, is just atmosphere. 
Um, but a quick thing too, with there are a couple little features of these that I kind of enjoy that I kind of found out on my own. Well, except for one, it was a recommendation. But this is what I use to hang the lanterns. Because, for example, um, in my new tent, I was rather uncomfortable hanging this from the center hook. Because a lot of tents will have a little hook or carabiner you can clip it to so it hangs in the center of the tent for light. And though I like that idea, I was, to me, I was thinking because three candles, this actually puts out a whole lot of heat. In fact, those candles get so hot, you can very easily, whoops, can't even see it. Hold on a minute. There we go. Is that better when we see that? Move that up a little bit. There we go. So very easily, you can boil water on this in a pinch. Uh, now, same thing at the campground. That'd be the last thing I'd want to do is try and, you know, boil water for tea or something with a candle. But this will heat up extremely fast. I was kind of surprised. I've used it to warm up my coffee. So the nice thing is, is that mug fits perfect for that. And because it's a, it's a titanium mug, it's very lightweight. So I just drop it on there. Usually I drop it on without those. And if I've got a warm, lukewarm cup of coffee, I can warm it up on that if I wanted to. Um, but it does get very hot. Well, how does that cause a problem in a tent? Well, a lot of the, the tent surfaces, you're not supposed to have them around fire. In fact, they're very, most tent companies are very uh, serious about the fact of keep this away from open flame. Oops, open flame. I mean, there's a housing, so it's unlikely it's going to touch uh, the materials of the tent unless, of course, you have an accident and it drops and breaks, which is another reason I like hanging it because if this was sitting on like a camping table inside the tent and the tent got kicked over and that it hit and the glass broke, well, you'd have a fire on your hands and that's not a great idea. So at least while if it's hanging, it's unlikely someone's going to kick it or knock it over. Uh, someone might bonk it with their head or hit it when they were fluffing out a blanket, hit it, but that's unlikely. Um, but same thing. This distance away from the tent surface, I'm not very comfortable with. Same thing here. It's got a good chain and a good bale, and that does, it's only one candle, so I'm not as concerned about this one, but this one I was. So I rigged up this little piece to hang it from. It's just a sim simple carabiner with a metal cord and a ring. So what I can do is simply, now I've got another carabiner here, I just clip onto it, and of course I can just hang it from the tent, and I've got, as you can see, this is a fairly long chain, plus the size of the bale, it'll hang it pretty low in the tent. Well, the problem with that is someone could knock it over, but it's a little lower, or you could hang it from a branch of a tree or something a little easier. But this is what I like to do. I loop it, like for example, there's a little ringlet in the tent. Run this around the ringlet, and I take this carabiner and click it onto here as well. Or I could actually click onto this ring as well. But then it's it has plenty of reach, gives it a little more room, and I'm not as uncomfortable with a, an accident happening. So anyway, uh, that's my basic review of the UCO candle lanterns. Um, I love the quality of light in them. You know, there's you have to be careful because it is an open flame in most tents. So you don't want to have that in an open, in a tent, so you have to be a little careful with it. So you know, please le read your manufacturer's directions or dealing with with flame in your tent. And it is a little bit of personal responsibility if you're going to do that. You have to realize you're going to have to be careful, otherwise you might have to suffer the uh, the problems that come with that. Anyway, that's about it, and thanks a lot for listening to my video. Bye.